dear students in microeconomic theory our aim is to analyze and predict economic behavior of economic agents as consumers resource owners business firms and also the operation of individual markets we have to analyze and predict the decisions of economic agents on the one hand and also we have to explain the operation of individual markets as i told you in the previous class market prices limits three important themes in microeconomics so we have to explain the decision making process of economic agents we have to explain the operation of individual markets and for this purpose that is to explain the operation of the markets and also the decision making process of economic agents we construct models we construct models an economic model is a simplified description of reality in the form of a definition an economic model is a simplified description of reality designed to yield hypotheses about economic behavior that can be tested so the 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 definition is a, an economic model is a simplified representation of reality designed to yield hypotheses about economic behavior that can be tested and as example to economic models you consider the quantity of a commodity that a consumer demands the quantity of the commodity that a consumer demands depends on price of the commodity income of the consumer prices of related commodities that is substitutes and complements in addition to this it also depends on the age of the consumer his gender his education his marital status the climatic conditions the nature of the employment religion caste community etc of the consumer etc etc so there are thousands of factors determining quantity demanded of a commodity by the consumer but given the taste and the preferences of the consumer demand theory identifies three factors as the most important determinants of quantity demand these three factors are one is the price of the commodity second is the income of the commodity sorry income of the consumer and the third is prices of substitutes and the complements prices of related goods although it may be unrealistic although it may be unrealistic to focus only on these three factors demand theory postulates that demand theory postulates that these three factors are capable of explaining consumer behavior and demand a model is a simplified representation of reality and in this example the simplification is quantity demanded is 
specified as a function of three variables even though quantity depends on many other variables. That is why we say that it is a simplification of reality. And a theory or a model usually results from causal observation of the real world. That is before constructing a theory or a model, you observe what is happening in the real world, what is happening in the economy. From the observation you can construct the model, construct the theory. As an example, it has been observed that a consumer will purchase more of a commodity when its price decreases or less of a commodity when its price increases. And that is what is known as the theory of demand. That is what is known as the theory of demand in microeconomics. And before accepting this theory of demand, we must go back to the real world to determine whether the implications and predictions whether the implications and predictions of the model are realistic, whether the implications and the predictions of the model are realistic. Only then we can accept the theory or model. So before constructing a model or a theory, we observe the real world and the theories and models are constructed based on these observations. According to Milton Friedman, Milton Friedman, a very prominent Nobel Prize winning economist, a model is not tested by the realism or lack of realism of its assumptions, but rather by its ability to predict accurately and explain. A model should be based not on the basis of the realism of its assumptions, but on the basis of its ability to predict accurately and explain. In the example we have discussed, quantity demand depends on many factors, but economic theory considers only three factors. It is assumed that the other factors are constant. These, these assumptions are unrealistic. But such assumptions are required to simplify the reality, otherwise the re otherwise the model will become very complicated and we will not be able to explain the reality. So before uh, evaluating a model, a model should not be evaluated on the basis of whether these assumptions are realistic or not, but on the basis of whether the model predicts accurately and explains the events. If so, we can accept the model tentatively. A model should be evaluated on the basis of its predictive ability, its ability to explain the real world, not on the basis of the realism of assumptions. If, it, if its predictions are correct, then the model should be tentatively accepted. <coughs> But while most uh, assumptions are used to, re to simplify the reality and in that, ext in that sense most assumptions are unrealistic, most uh, economists take a broader picture. According to these economists, the appropriate methodology of economics is to test a theory 
appropriate methodology in economics to test a theory not only by its ability to predict accurately but also by whether the predictions follow logically from the assumptions and by the internal consistency of these assumptions even though milton friedman suggested that a model should be evaluated on the basis of its predictive ability only not based on the realism of assumptions most economists accept that a model should be evaluated not only on the ability of the model to predict accurately but also on the basis of whether the predictions follow logically from assumptions whether the predictions are logically possible from the assumptions and also the internal consistency of the assumptions these two criteria should be kept in mind while evaluating the model that is whether predictions are logically possible from the assumptions and whether the assumptions are internally consistent that is the broader picture uh, used by economists to evaluate a model also in the discussion of the methodology of economics a distinction is also made between normative and positive a distinction is also made between normative and positive analysis positive analysis deals with what is positive analysis deals with what is it is concerned with how an economic system performs its basic functions how an economic system performs its basic functions of what to produce how to produce whom to produce etc it is concerned with what is normative economics studies what ought to be what ought to be what is and what ought to be it is concerned with the how the basic economics functions should be performed how the basic economic functions should be performed so it is based on value judgments so normative economics is is based on value judgments and as it is based on value judgments it is subjective and also controversial so normative analysis and positive analysis they are interlinked an economist cannot make a positive statements only he has to make normative statements also normative statements are based on value judgment of the individual and the value judgment of one individual will be different from that of another individual so it is subjective and controversial so for more about methodology etc you refer books of methodology these are philosophical questions involving a lot of philosophical issues and the like anyway when we study welfare economics we will consider these issues in detail and this is all about models methodology and models methodology and value judgments models are used in economics to explain economic phenomena the methodology is as i told you uh, models are used based on assumptions and also remember the two types of analysis normative and positive